Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is kind of a truck talk video because I'm doing it on my truck, but I'm not in my garage this time. The, the, today's topic is gonna. I, I, I want to hit a hit. I want to hit on how how these people, how your ex, can just continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. It's like they can't stop. It's like they're a Terminator. They just continue to to play these stupid games. I've been dealing with a couple of people lately who uh, who are going through this, and uh, it's giving me a lot of flashbacks to my own situation. Um, you know, the other thing that's interesting is you know they they continue this stuff and they and they can't seem to stop. They have to do it. It's like it's like it's in their their default nature to uh, to do these things, and and the crazy part was I was talking to this one one person and they were reading off the email that they had just they had just received and I'm like holy cow, that's the same wording that my ex used in this exact you know same emails that are not the same emails but you know similar emails from years ago you know and, and one of the things on this and the i'm not entirely sure if the guy was feeling bad about this but but he's like oh man i uh, the first line of the of the email i said something wrong so they completely decided that that they're not gonna they're not gonna play ball they're gonna force me to go to court because of that and i'm like nah, it doesn't matter yeah, granted, if you give the, if we ever give them a, a an easy way to latch on to something, to go, aha, right there, yeah, you said you said this, so I can turn around and and use that to say that I'm not going to do anything because you said that. Right there, right there with what you said is is completely obvious. <laughs> it was funny. It reminded me of a there was a time a while back. This was early on. I, I I may have learned about narcissism because I, I think I did because I think I, I you know everyone was saying you know you go no contact go no contact and uh, this was before a lot of people well I don't know how many people are talking about it with kids but but uh, you know all all the people were like I don't know, I don't know I don't have kids you know my situation is just this go no contact so I tried to go no contact and a few months into it once the ex realized that I was not playing the game anymore I wasn't I wasn't coming around you know whimpering like a little dog like you know please 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 pay attention to me uh, she had reached out and and she's like you know well, you know we need to co-parent you know you're you're not you're not co-parenting and I'm like crap you know typical double bind typical you know it's like don't you hate those damn double binds it's like no matter what you do you lose. It's like every situation is a loser. I, I I still deal with double binds. Double binds are just one of those things that just continue to continue and continue and continue. But in the course of this, of this conversation, of this email, this dialogue, I'm like, crap. She got me. You know, if now she's saying I'm not not you know co-parenting and and. Uh, so initially, I'm like, you know, how do I know that you're genuine on this? You know, what are you going to do to prove that something's different, right? I thought that was a reasonable request. I thought that, you know, asking or saying, uh, you know, hey, you know, you've been a complete freaking nightmare, you know, Freddy Krueger for the last two years, however long it is, I don't remember. Um, you know, what exactly... You know, what are you going to do as an olive branch to do it? You know, to, to, to prove that I'm not going to just, you know, walk out there and get my head, you know, like whack-a-mole, whack a duane da dunk you know, right on my head as I stick my head out like it happened numerous times before. Uh, for the people who've gone through this, how many times have you stuck your head back out of the hole thinking, okay, things are different now. They're going to be a normal human only to get, you know, dunked right back on the head. I think it, I think... It took me one, two, three or four times after the divorce, right? I mean, after the separation and everything, where I would like, you know, okay, things are different. Dunk. Oh, okay, I go back. Anyways, curious. 
and leave it in the comments below. I'd like to, I'd like to know. I would imagine, because all these patterns are definitely reoccurring and repeat, it's probably been more than once. Anyway, so, so I, I, I said that, and like the example I was using before, I was like, oh, I can see, this is the email I got, I can see from your comment that you're just not ready to co-parent and be mature and put our kids ahead of everything else. I'm paraphrasing because I don't have it in front of me, and I don't really want to read it, but, you know. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Fine. Let's start over. Let's let today be a new day. So you wanted to talk. What did you want to talk about? And I get an email back because we weren't doing this on the phone. Don't talk to your, your toxic ex on the phone. Do everything primarily through email. Personally, I would not recommend you even do it through text because it's too immediate. It's too, too much that they can dip, poke you in the eye or boop poke you in the eye and uh, get a reaction from you. Don't do it to yourself. Uh, but anyways, so what happened is I get this email back, you know, oh, I'm, I'm making dinner, you know, I'm making tuna casserole and I'm doing homework because I'm, I'm a college student now, you know, that type of thing. And probably it was a Hoover, right? I mean, to be perfectly honest, it was probably, you know, it was a dialogue. And in her mind, if she went back to that type of dribble, it would, uh, I don't know, you know, hey, 20 some odd years, 20 years, 20 years of pattern behavior where I did the exact same thing all the time. Why would anyone think or why would she think that I would just arbitrarily change? You know, I, I get that this whole thing, I played a big role in it just because I changed. I decided I wanted more out of life. I digress, though. So, I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I think I was going out with, I think I was dating Debbie when this happened. I'm not entirely sure. We've been dating for six years. Anyways, so, fast forward a few days later. And I'm like, hey, what are, can we, uh, dude, it was something. It was like, can I, I asked her something. It was like, can, uh, can I swap some time or could we swap? Actually, I think I wanted to switch the weekends. I'm like, hey, could we swap the weekends? At the time, when I was still in denial and didn't realize what a superhuman my mom was and her partner. Uh, they had, um, you know, their their long weekends were opposite. So every time they came down, I didn't have the kids. Actually, my mom is the one who really pushed me. He's like, oh, you should ask her. I'm like, I'm not going to ask. She's going to say no. Oh, you should ask. You should ask. I'm like, fine, I'll ask. So I asked a question. Hey, would it be possible to swap weekends? No. That was the, that was the, that was, and our new, our new, our newfound communication are starting fresh. A clean slate. No. <laughs> now the thing is, is anybody who's in this, who's currently going through that, uh, more than likely, potentially, me saying that probably was a little, you know, kind of, kind of hit a nerve, kind of hit a raw nerve, because uh, it's really annoying whenever they just say no because they can say no. And I and I tried a couple times. I'm like, hey. Uh, um, can we, you know, like, well, you know, is there an issue? Is there a problem? Is there something we can discuss? I mean, it just seems just saying no kind of seems like things are not, you know, reset. And it, I think the next thing I got was like, you know, I, I, I'm not going to, I refuse to discuss it with you, for you further or, or some stupid thing like that. So this was before, before the DSD Jedi mind, you know, uh, master thing with all this. I, uh. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I grabbed my little keyboard, pulled up that email, looked at what she said, and I'm like, dear X, comma, I can see by the comment from these emails that you're just not ready to work together and co-parent for the best interests of our children. But just know, whenever you are, I'm right here. I'm right here ready to do it. <laughs> I literally took 
that email that she had sent and almost took it not not word not word for word but the 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 general premise I absolutely I absolutely uh, said that back to her and amazingly enough all communications fell apart right after that here's my point these people don't change they're not going to get a conscience they're not going to one day realize you know being a complete pain in the butt really makes everything harder for everyone it just isn't going to happen they love the chaos they love the confrontation and they're going to continue to do that and it, it's the problem is is when you're in the middle of it 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 it's really tough and it's very triggering uh one of one of the people i've been coaching on this is uh he's doing pretty good i mean he's had his up they've had their ups and down days good days and bad days uh you know the ex is kind of winning right now in some ways actually it depends it's like it's winning the war or the yeah the battle but not necessarily the war lots of mistakes are are being made that hopefully which is typical after the eight to nine year mark it seems like that's whenever the the targeted parent the one who's basically been the victim of narcissistic abuse starts to have some victories. That's tip. I mean, typically, everyone I've talked to, that's the sweet spot, right? It's like everything is a complete sit. Everything is a complete uh, pile of crud, a turd sandwich. And at the eight and nine year mark, that's whenever it seems like the courts sometimes start to go, hey, wait a minute. What? What's going on? Why are we still here? What is the argument? And then they start to realize, oh, maybe it's not the person who's been trying to to solve problems or coughing to keep come back into court because the other person is just creating so much chaos and drama. The thing is, and it's weird, right? In the past, all this stuff used to really bother me. I would, I would get angry. I would get triggered, triggered. I know people hate that word, but I think we are the ones who can really use it. You know, people who are like, you know, I'm triggered because you didn't, you know, you called me a cat and I'm a dog. Seriously. You know, I mean, that's like just trying to find something to be upset about. In my opinion, triggered is whenever you basically have PTSD or C, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder or complex post-traumatic stress disorder, and you literally have a panic response because of these. You get that stupid email, and you have that adrenaline rush, and your heart starts beating, and you feel like you're out of breath, and and you're having an anxiety attack, or you feel like you're having, getting a headache, or you know, you have these physical responses because you've basically been tortured. And uh, I'm, I'm just here to say that, you know, as you realize, as you realize what these people are, you realize what they do, you realize how they operate, you, you go through this transformation to where you're like, you know what? I can't control this person. I can't fix it. I can't convince people that they're, you know, demon spawns. All I can do is do the best I can in my life, try to minimize the damage, try to try to keep some stability with my kids, if you have kids, and move move on. And do stuff like, like come out. Is, is this amazing? I just took a dirt road up in the mountains. You guys know I live in the desert, right? So I had to drive like four hours to get here. And, and, and I don't know if I can camp here. So I'm gonna leave different story check my other channel out i might have a video on this anyways but go do something else occupy your mind with good things with with something that makes you happy something that makes you relaxed i know it's hard i know i know that it's when you're in the midst of it you have zero energy to do anything you know i don't care if you 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 know you get a hammock and you run it between two two trees which uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna get a hammock I don't have one yet and take a nap I, I had to take a nap in my truck bed 
It was nice though. <laughs> All right, guys. It, don't give up. You're ultimately going to persevere through this. You're going to salvage your life. You're going to minimize the damage that they've done. Uh, and you're going to take your life back. And they're not going to be able to do the same BS that they've always been able to do. So on that, take care of yourself, and I will chat with you on the next video.